All right, so welcome back. Uh, it's time has come to listen to Ferro Amp. We have the CEO, Christa Werner, with us, who will present the group and its products and where it's headed. So without further ado, please go ahead with your presentation. Okay, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today, meeting all of you, even though it's a little bit strange. I cannot meet you in live, which I, I actually am looking forward to uh, sometimes in the future, but we have this strange situation. So I'm talking into a camera, feeling a little bit uh, um, uh, sort of, you know, distance to you, we're not seeing you. I have the pleasure to be here today and presenting Ferramp, Ferramp Electronique, the Swedish company. Uh, my name is Christer Werner. I have been the CEO of the company since mid-February this year, uh, when I had the opportunity to join the company. Uh, we will make a fast journey through uh, the history of Ferramp. We will talk about the market situation, where we are at the moment, looking into uh, the trends uh, that influences us and the possibility for us to go forward, uh, and looking into our products, our ecosystem, uh, and a little bit what we're doing for the moment, the, ne near, uh, the, the near future, as well as, as a sort of mid-long-term uh, uh, focus. So, uh, if anybody had uh, thought about the name Ferwamp, uh, what, what does that mean? Does that stand for anything? Uh, Ferwamp, for those of you who, who uh, knows a little bit of Swedish, knows that our founder, today the C, uh, CTO of the company, still with us, uh, a, a great innovator, Björn Järnström. Jan uh, is Ferro. And the unit for ström, järn ström in Swedish is amp, ferroamp, järn ström. So we have the founder with us all the time in the company name. Um, <clears throat> as said, Björn is a, is a fantastic innovator. And he, back in 2010, he created or founded this company. So we are 10 years, uh, we celebrated our 10 years anniversary this spring. Uh, the big party will follow in the fall as soon as possible, I would say. Um, and uh, back in 2010, Björn was thinking a lot about how to use uh, the, 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 the uh, capacity in the three phases, in the main fuse you have to, to a home and to a real estate. And uh, that led to an innovation that he, uh, the first patent of phase balancing was granted in uh, 2013. And uh, it followed uh, with, with some installations, handling and monitoring and controlling um, energy and, and phase balancing in 2015. We say that our first uh, real installation was made 2015, for before that it was... It was um, prototype installation and and just to to stay a little bit with Björn and the innovation we have over time been recognized for having an extremely high level of technical competence and innovation skills in our company. So we have a, a conference room back at our facility in Sponga in Stockholm with a lot of awards and prizes that we have been recognized with over the time. You see some of them here below and I just wanted to take the opportunity to highlight three of them. It's what we call in the global uh, solar industry, the, the, the global, the Nobel Prize of, of solar industry. And we have been awarded that 2016, 18, and now this spring 2020 again. So winning that award or being uh, awarded that three times is, I would say, a, a, a really achievement and also put us on the map about what the technology level that we have. Going forward in the, uh, in the history, we are taking us from the R&D phase into more of a commercial phase. We have today approximately 1,600 installations. Um, we uh, installed the first PowerShare installation. And what do I mean by the PowerShare installation? It's several building that interacts and balancing the energy and the capacity between them. I will come back to that later on, 2018. We got listed on uh, Nasdaq First North 2019. Uh, we went into what we call a growth phase 2020. Now we're looking into 
to leaving the prototype phase uh, into a more commercialized, more industrialized phase growing from Sweden, where we have most of those 1600 installations, into primarily the Nordics and, and Europe. Uh, we have been fast growing. You could see that over the rolling 12, we have increased from 10 to 65 million. Uh, so we are a fast growing company and we aim at rolling uh, run rate 400 million. We said that when we did the IPO a year ago and we keep uh, holding on to that uh, for, for the future. I see that is definitely in the reach and um, we, the market is there. So how come I'm so confident in that? You will know that we are in a rapidly changing and growing market. I worked in the telecom uh, market back in the 90s and early 20s and saw the shifting from fixed telephony up to via mobile telephony to data and to the smartphones that we have today. Um, I see the, sh the, the, the big changes coming in, in in energy industry and you all aware of that. We have a rapid growth in, in building out of the solar, the renewable energy that puts a, an, an extremely pressure on the old structure of the grid that we have today that all of you are aware of that we historically produced well planned in a few power plants, uh, predictable, well-planned uh, energy distributed, uh, distributed over a grid into a regional and local uh, grid. Today we are producing um, a renewable energy out in the grid on, on a local places. It's, it's hard to plan, hard to predict and it's, it's produced locally. We also have a, a, an electrification of the society, especially driven, I would say, capacity-wise of the, the um, elect electrical vehicle. And for those of you who, who read the, um, the latest statistics, you know that uh, electrical vehicle in Sweden, we are now in Sweden, um, uh, grow with 60% last year. And, but still, it's only 3% of the 5 million vehicles in Swedish roads that is, is electrified. So, and we are in a capacity problematic situation at the moment. So imagine when we have 5, 8, 10% of the vehicle fleet electrified. This creates uh, a pressure also, of course, on the, on the regulatory side and in the European Union, who has said that we are going to take the lead in this changing uh, market over the time. There is a pressure on changing the, the regulatory uh, situation, which opens up for, for a great possibility, especially when it comes to, for example, power share and local handled grids, uh, where Faroamp has its really uh, main situation. I will also highlight the technology development in the society, not only when it comes to renewable energy, uh, when it comes to the, uh, energy storage, the development there, but not only that, also in the data handling, the monitoring and, and the computer capacity to handle that to machine learning, AI, etc., to balancing this. Um, I said that we are in the, in the changing market right at the moment. Uh, for the first time this summer, we could read that uh, in Europe, there were more energy produced with renewable sources than from the old sources. So this is not the hypothetical change or something. It's we are standing in the middle now, or at least in the beginning of the change of the market. Uh, this will influence us, us over time. Uh, but it will change us and it will put extreme requirement on, on the situation. We need to handle those, especially the capacity challenges. Today, already, we read in the newspapers, there is limitations. There is limitations to build out factories. There is limitations to, to build out uh, residential areas. There is limitation of electrifying buses and, and local transportations in the cities. So it's, it's not a, a market that will happen. It's here and now, and it's happening at the moment. Faroamp has the solution to solve these uh, problems and to be part of that, which means that we are extremely well positioned when it comes to the, to the, to the shifting market situation. Faroamp ecosystem is well positioned. Um, so what do we really do then? 
um, we have the, uh, the brain, our energy hub, up at the left corner. This hub is, is collects data. Uh, it's connected to the grid. It's connected to all of the other como components on a DC, a direct current link. This is the really key thing where we are unique at Ferramp. We control, we monitor, and we have uh, collects data of, of all the sources that's on the, the DC link. And we also handles the, the, um, the usage of the three phases, the phase balancing thing here. The, the, the brain, the smart thing is the energy hub, and we connect. Today you see here we have the, the solar, um, solar energy production via our solar string optimizer. This is the product actually we won the, the InterSolar Award for this spring. It's a new version 2 of that one. We have energy storage here represented of, of one type. We have a couple of different type of, of energy storage that's, that is connected into and that we could speak on our system. We have EV charger and everything is held together and controlled by this and it's, it's presented on a, on a very pedagogical um, platform. So you visualize uh, the situation all the time and you gather all the data. Um, coming into the data, this is a really a core thing. Um, this is a, actually a, a, a business that we today uh, don't really have as, as, a, as an income or revenue stream for the moment, but it's something we plan for, for the future. But we still have this. The, uh, the brain continuously collects an enormous amount or, of data in, in real time where you could monitor. Um, it's a cloud-based um, software. It, you could uh, monitor your situation at the moment. And in this green, we see uh, um, a condominium in, in Stockholm. You can see the blue thing is the, is the usage of energy and, and the yellow is the... Um, the uh, solar energy production, and we have the classic phenomena that you use a lot of, of uh, your capacity need is before and after the sun is up. It's in the morning when you, you have a shower, you make coffee, and in the evening when you, uh, uh, you're coming home from the office, that's before and after the sun has been there. Um, and in, in uh, Sweden, we pay for the, uh, the, the peak usage, which is somewhere here in the picture. But with our system, we continuously uh, monitor and analyze, analyze this situation. And we, together with an energy storage, we uh, manage to, uh, to use uh, a lot of the uh, produced solar energy, but we also shave the peaks, as we say. We keep the... Uh, the um, um, the cost for the grid uh, down, and, and we keep the, the, uh, the capacity level down for this, which is the black you could see here. So we have a lot of upcoming possibilities around all this data collected and all this with the analysis tools and simulations tools that's coming up. So connected it into some, some summary and some real cases. Uh, this is a real estate area in, uh, in Gothenburg. Uh, it's actually a system built by us. I think it competed for the, uh, for the ugliest new build uh, building um, this year, and it actually won. But I'm not so proud of, of that. I'm actually proud of that it actually won the, uh, uh, the most energy efficient building as well. In, in the basement, there is, uh, is uh, retired Volvo bus batteries, energy storage. And in these buildings, we have connected our energy hubs together with chargers and solar uh, energy, as you see here. Uh, so the system is very efficient. Uh, it's uh, um, you, scalable. If you have this, you could start with with the with the energy hub and and slowly build out the system with adding on solar panels. So you don't need to do any everything from the beginning. Um, we this picture shows a couple of different uh, uh, um, customer solutions. We have. 
parking garage, residential areas, down to small houses. All of these have a very positive investment and uh, um, if using uh, Ferroamp uh, products. Up, up here we have a parking garage where we solve the, the EV charging capacity uh, problem. Uh, they wanted to build out 100 uh, EV charging spots in that garage. It should, with an ordinary solution, building out the grid, take 36 months and, and cost almost 5 million sec. We uh, made this happen over uh, four months with a less investment. And we also, at the same time, saved a lot of grid costs. Uh, different solutions on the residential area. I talked about the power share. This uh, residential solution up here, uh, they, it consists of, of a couple of different houses in the residential area, and they have different uh, capacity needs over the day and the night, and, and uh, could uh, share their capacity, and by that, say, both grid costs and, uh, and energy. Um, how do we uh, reach this market? We are, as I said, working with uh, um, a couple of, uh, of a distribution strategy. We are working with energy service providers, energy consultants, supporting them with analysis, as well as integrators. Um, so coming in to finally say, what, what's the focus for the moment? The focus for the moment for us is to to industrialize our products, to scale them, to make them possible to produce in large volumes with a good margin. That has been, we've been working for some time and we will keep on doing that. We'll find uh, volume production partners in Asia and Europe to support us in this. We will uh, establish a services offerings to our customers. And at the same time, we are looking into our um, uh, partner structure to come out on, on, on a very effective way in, in Sweden and in the Nordics, as well as start to establish this in, in Europe. We have today selected a couple of, of partners that will bring us out, start of our uh, European journey. Uh, in the next step, we are, will come with, with our next generation of products, the 2.0, adding some functionality adding uh, what I talked about before, the, the software, uh, business, uh, model, uh, software business, and uh, we will grow the partner structure. After establishing that, we will grow that to a bigger part of Europe. Um, just to give you a, a, just a, a brief of our um, competitor situation, Coming back to the fact that we are the world leader when it comes to handling the DC technology and all of these components on the renewable uh, side, the uh, solar energy, the energy storage and the EV charger is, is handling on the DC side. We have high resolution data, uh, we have the phase, phase balancing as well as the, uh, the power share on the grids as the core thing. That makes us uh, unique compared to a lot of, of our comp competitors. That's our uh, unique selling points. So as a summary, um, we will uh, continue to grow over the period of time. We will take our products, scale them to, to uh, large volume products uh, production. We will take them on a structured way from Sweden out to Europe over the coming period. Uh, we have the business models for that and, and the market is, is here and, and now for us. So that was uh, basically all I wanted to go through uh, today. Okay. And thank you very much for, for listening to me. I hope this uh, fast journey yeah. uh, gave you some, some questions over. To Absolutely, thank you, thank you very much. I think to, to start off, um, just to understand the dynamics here. So you're mentioning early on, you know, several structural trends, you know, speaking towards the solutions. But uh, in terms of sales today, the sales curve you had, is it driven, for example, by solar PV or uh, EV charging? Does it when when I buy an EV charger, do I want to add the energy hub? Or how, how does that dynamic yeah. work? 
the, 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 the really good thing with our products is actually that you could build them um, component by component. So it's, it's very scalable products. Today, I would say it's, it's mainly driven by, by two things. One is the PV, the solar energy build out. And the second one is the, is the, uh, the bottleneck for the EV charging. So it depends a little bit. Uh, the, the, the small villas, the, the, uh, the small houses has a, has a huge... Uh, um, PV market uh, rollout for the moment. Uh, there we could solve uh, be a very effective system for 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 the villas. Also handling the phase balancing, giving the opportunity to charge uh, an electric vehicle almost three times as fast as as if you didn't use our system. But it's also driven of more complex businesses like the. Uh, the parking garage, I told you, or or, or the the uh, residential area that needs to uh, build out some some parking lots. We also have some grid support, but basically, the, the, today the the big trends for us is the the solar energy as well as the EV charging thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and obviously you know you had very very high growth uh, last couple of years here, and, and you're talking now about getting your products up to volume production. Could you? Just go into a bit more detail what you're doing there and where you are in that process. Yeah, um, we, um, um, we, we have, as, as said, the good thing is that we have 1,600 system up, uh, systems up and running. So actually, it's, uh, technology-wise, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's proven, it's working. It's, it's uh, solving uh, some of these uh, problems that we have. We have... Uh, industrialize these products as they are today in a step what we call one and a half, making them more stable volume uh, production uh, able so, so you could do that as well as we have uh, of course, worked with the bill of material, structured our uh, supplier base, and that's something that we will keep on doing for the near time. So. We have been producing a lot of these things internally ourselves, and now we are moving more and more to a partner network with volume production. We have moved the SSO, the Solar String Optimizer, in step one to uh, volume production in China. We have uh, moved our energy storage optimizer to a volume production in Sweden, and we will keep on doing that with our, our uh, next products, the, uh, the hub systems. We will move them to, to production in in Europe by, by uh, partners, in production partners. Understood. And, and your goal then of 400 million SEC yeah. in sales, yeah. um, is that based on the products reaching like the 1.5 status or the 2.0 status? Yeah. Sort of? We we will um, they will uh, reach the 1.5 status. Some of them might also reach the uh, the 2.0 status, but uh, it will also add the services business to that to some extent, and we will start adding on the uh, the uh, software business. But it's based on the product portfolio that we have today. But it's growing outside Sweden to the Nordics and to Europe. That's how we create that and and adding in the services business on that. Okay, and, and also to reach this level of 400 million, does that include Sweden or does it include also selling to other parts it, of Europe? It um, includes uh, growing into Nordics and uh, some of the countries in, in Europe, yes. Are there any specific countries in Europe that you find as being more higher potential than others and, and why? Why? Yeah, today we have started up with... with uh, um, we have some, some installations already in the Netherlands. We are looking into the Benelux uh, countries. We, of course, need to look into where um, the, the trends for the moment. It shifts a little bit between the countries. But I would say that the Benelux areas, we will look into to Germany and, and to maybe to Spain and Portugal also for, for the coming period here. Yeah, understood. Mm -hmm. And um, just to, to round off with one, one last question. You mentioned now you, you have this cloud service. Yep. With, you know, you're, you're obtaining a lot of data that could be very useful, uh, and you're currently not really capitalizing on that or, or selling that as a separate uh, product. What are the plans there, and, and how do you plan to launch that sort of initiative? Yeah, today we uh, we will 
work with partners uh, in in uh, finding solutions and, and cooperate with. There will be a lot of facility management systems that needs this kind of data energy management systems. So we will be open to cooperate with with a lot of different uh, uh, companies. We will uh, work with uh, open APIs. We will find our way to to uh, to work with them. Uh, our aim is to build a, a platform that is possible to add on and work with with partners over over this uh, going forward. Yeah, I understand. And I think uh, we have to, due to time, we have yeah. to round it off there. But thank you so much, Christa, for coming. And, uh, it's been a pleasure to be here. Talking about Ferrant. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye.